Becca likes to have things in her mouth. She's quite a character. She's licking this. Good girl. This is me out. from her back, her back and me. taping Good girl. with the camera Becca in one hand cool. and my reins Good in another. Girl. So just got on for a few minutes here. Here uh, again, working by myself, setting the camera up, uh, asking her to get over the mounting block to pick me up. Um, she wanted to walk off, so I corrected her. Um, I want her to stand for a minute, so I give her some corrections for walking off. I think that's the first time she offered to walk off, so we're just going to do it again. Uh, from the very first ride, I expect the horse to stand there and wait. Um, if you can't control that, what else are you going to have a hard problem controlling? Um, so I don't line her up. I make her get over there. I did put my time in and work on this, having her come to the mounting block. And she wanted to get on the bridge there and that's not what I'm asking um, so again correction for that it's like you know what I want I've put in my time I expect you to be able to do this and just stand here I relax give her a rub exhale I just want this always to be just stand and wait for anybody that ever gets on this horse um, I'm asking her flex here, that she never thinks that she has to walk off immediately. She has to wait until she's asked. Um, so just again doing short little rides uh, so she knows what to expect. Um, at this point she had not been trimmed and she has had very sharp edges on her toes. Um, she still hasn't been trimmed by a professional since she's been here. Her feet were well taken care of at her former place, but not how I like with um, a Mustang roll. And it was evident between this horse uh, and my horses um, didn't slip in the same fitting footing rather because I roll their toes on the front and back asking her to flex here and you can see she gets uh, really agitated um, agitated by pressure um, and I just have to teach her to give and then she will get a release. Um, you know, she's just preoccupied with the thought of maybe biting the rain or biting my foot. When I'm asking her to walk off, I Try to look where I'm going, get some energy in my body, and when I want to halt, I want to take all that energy away. And I usually give pre-cues so they know what's coming next. Correction for walking off because I've relaxed my seat. And then when I want to go, again I look where I'm going, ask her to walk on, and I squeeze. I do not like to keep squeezing or to kick. Um, if she doesn't walk off when asked, then I will um, spank her from behind with the reins or saddle strings if I have them. So I'll say Becca and whoa and the squeeze and release of the reins um, to get her to halt all this stuff that I've done on the ground um, in hand uh, to let her know when I'm going to ask her to stop 
by saying her name first, the word and, and the squeeze and release and the halt. Uh, she that was again the first time that she had wanted to walk off when I dismounted can't have that either so correction and back her up see everything in the mouth she just uh, gets preoccupied with that so that's the end of our short session under saddle. Um, prior to this, I worked with her on uh, with a sled, and uh, what else? Something else on the ground. I think a bull whip. And um, so when I go get the camera to shut it off, I'm going to ask her to stand and uh, ground tie. So we've been working on that. It's very hard for her, but it's very important. Um, when I go in to feed her and I want her to back up and not molest me while I'm putting hay in her hay bag, I'm feeding her in the nibble net, and I had a discussion with her about staying back away from me. Uh, their heads are so big and if they have that head going back and forth they can hit you um, and I've been hit by another horse that lives here and she wasn't trying to hurt me but uh, just putting her head over mine to get the hay so it has a good purpose many purposes for teaching them to ground tie well, it's very hard for her she wants to be in your pocket And now on to, um, I'm just showing a very short clip of me giving her a trim. Um, well, right after I worked with that. Okay, so I'm just taking uh, the toe and beveling from the top and the bottom just to give her a roll and it did help her with her traction. I didn't tape That's the whole thing. When but you try to steal the trainer's hat. Five <laughs> minutes. You um, have to wear it. She wanted to play with my stuff so it's through. She's trying to do this in here trick. just to show you um, how she is. <laughs> her personality. Yes, doesn't she look cute? So this is uh, a little ground driving before I rode her again. I have someone to tape this time. Um, there's much improvement with the ground driving. Um, again, with this, I only ground drive her for maybe five minutes and find a good place to end. Ground driving helps when you're starting a young horse because this type of thing is what she'll do under saddle when she feels the contact. Uh, the ground driving um, as opposed to maybe long lining from a circle where you're not going to get the same feel but actually ground driving behind the animal this gives the horse almost an identical feel uh, when you ask for them to bend to the right uh, into your turns while you're riding. When I use right rein ground driving, it's the same feeling she's going to get when I'm on her. So this really allows me to see how are my brakes going to be, how are my turns going to be, how she's going to accept the contact. And so it's no surprise when I ride her um, when she starts fussing with um, the equipment or fussing with the bridle, fussing with the contact. She has lived her five and a half years not having to give to pressure and more um, likely pushing into pressure when horses are getting led with the chain over their nose and it's not loose but it um, has tension in it even, even if it's not hard shanking. <laughs> The tension in the chain applied to the nose, the horse is um, going to
push through when the horse is allowed to drag uh, a human on the end of it, uh, which is what I saw her do and what she did to me when I went up um, to work with her where she was before she came here. Um, so we want her to get off the equipment and give to the pressure and um, again I give her warning when I'm going to halt. I say her name, the word and, and then whoa as I let the lines slip through my fingers just a little bit giving her a heads up that I am going to pull and release the reins. So I let her hang herself if she doesn't halt when I squeeze and release the reins. Um, if she keeps going she gets a correction. This is very dangerous here. You can get kicked, dragged, stomped on. Um, so just my disclaimer. Uh, the horses can get tangled up. Uh, I carry a knife always. Um, just sharpened it again because it was getting dull um, in case I get into trouble. But uh, uh, driving, ground driving is dangerous, driving is dangerous. It's all dangerous. So. so when I find a good spot for to end with, then that's where I want to end. And when I do, I throw the right rein, one, two, and a big flip over a hind end um, to halt. And every time this is done to her, she gets a little more relaxed with it. One, correction for walking off, two, and flip. So she'll get, she'll get less reactive to that um, the more it's done. So I can't remember if... I rode her in the pen or I just went straight out. Um, I want to say I rode her in the pen and can't find that footage. Um, had the gal that was taping open the gate for me and this is our first voyage out. And with all the snow cover it covered a lot of the stuff or junk <laughs> that I have outside. So she did really well here. Um, I take her out and I, tr I don't go very far. I turn around and have her haul on a loose line and head back to the barn. So um, many horses will do well in a ring and then don't want to leave the barn and leave their friends. So from the very first ride, um, not from the very first ride, the very first time out, I want to take the horse out alone. I don't want them to get Buddy sour. I want to be able to ride out alone, but I also want to stay in control. I don't want to ride far out and then turn around and find out my horse is a raven lunatic because he's got to get back home. So this is how I stay in control by going out a little way, uh, make sure my horse can stand on the loose line, and then ask him to walk on. And she does extremely well extremely brave. I had hand walked her out here one time prior and she was extremely brave. So I did, uh, after this footage was taken, uh, asked her to go out and she didn't want any part of it and I'm assuming it because all the snow had melted and now the shadows were everywhere. You know, here right now in this video, I brought her all the way in the ring and she and looked up down the trail, acting like she's going to go, and she is more than happy to go right out. So um, I was really pleased with that. I'm heading back in here. I'm going to ask her to halt. She's um, objecting to the contact there, but then she does a nice job.
So I'm always checking my brakes with a regular halt or one rain stop to make sure I'm in control. <laughs> and here I'm getting the rider ready to ride her again. Footing's a lot better. Snow is melted. Oh, no rolling, no rolling. I set the camera up and um, her owner came to visit um, to watch the session and I didn't want her to have to tape. I wanted her to be able to pay attention and it's hard when you're taping somebody um, just to see our progress because um, she had never seen her go under saddle. Um, been working with her with my horses to get her skills up. So once I get this horse going, um, then we'll work on getting them together. I like the way she's uh, relaxed here. You know, she just moved her foot anticipating my weight getting on her. It's a lot to carry. <laughs> so I just like to sit every time and just pat on them and just relax, let my air out, exhale, so they can tell the difference from relax and then when you pick up the reins and look up and get ready to ride that there's a dra drastic difference between the two you know so no energy here she does really well mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to go I have my audience back there my horse Ruger he always he always likes to look, see what uh, I'm making everybody else do, and he's glad I'm not picking on him. Unfortunately, I have to stay in a smaller area and not able to use the whole ring um, because I want to stay in view of the camera here, so. Still at this point riding her with the double diamond rope halter and you can see she just uh, in just a very short time she gets she gets agitated why do I have to do this you know why do I have to work asking her to move her hindquarters around just to be able to control her um, if I correct her by giving a little bump on her face for um, not giving the pressure or for flipping her head like that um, just so she doesn't think about up in the ante I just have to get her busy and move her, move her um, butt around but I was just asking her for the first time ever this is my first time asking her to try to do a turn on the forehand again when I asked her to go I squeeze and if she doesn't walk off I spank one rain stop so slide slide down the inside rain release all my energy and sit back on my pockets slide slide down low out to the side and let the outside rain slip to my fingers or she would not be able to get her head to my boot so I'm just practicing practicing this so it becomes a muscle memory so if somebody needs to do an emergency stop she'll know what to do immediately without thinking about it when you give them the warning that you're going to slide down that inside rain um, 
they are, they know how to set up their back end so they're not going to be pulled over um, and also it just lets you know that they're given to the bridal so it's a lot easier to teach this stuff to a young horse uh, without a bit and if you needed to add the bit later for uh, shows that require it uh, it's a lot easier for the horse to understand once it's been taught without pulling on its mouth and it'll do it immediately once it's been taught in the rope halter so um, I'm narrating this over the top of it so it's sometimes difficult um, to see what's going to happen next um, so I'm just doing the best I can to let you know what I'm doing as I come back in the picture here um, so I just started working on leg gilts with her um, having her step over to the side a little bit there she backs up nice another one lane stop And I'm also um, mounting her from the fence. Uh, so not just from the block, wherever I want to get on, I want her to come over to me, um, bring her hip over, trying to help here. And um, I'm pointing to their hip and she brings it over. Uh, at first, the first time I asked her to pick me up on the fence, I used a dressage whip and tapped her over and now after just one time I just have to motion to that spot or I can use my rein. So very happy with her progress and um, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll have more going forward. I guess not much more but well I don't know. And every time I uh, dismount, she's happy to hang out with me. So she's not too traumatized <laughs> by whatever I've done. Um, the video is going to cut off here, I think. But I rode her in Dr. Cook's Bitless Bridal after for probably just a few more minutes. Um, so I was putting it on here. And she, she did well. I was... Uh, glad that she did well in it because prior she was too fixated on the rings and um, she got over it so that was nice. <laughs>